Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Today we are in Cedarhurst on Spruce Street. And we're gonna check out a rooftop condensing unit that apparently is not delivering cold air to this retail location. So I'm climbing up the ladder right now, which is secured. And I'm gonna get up on this roof and see what's going on with this rooftop unit. All right, guys. Looks like I gotta do a little a running start here. <laughs> Let's see. Do I really feel like running? Let's see. Did that. Easy peasy. All right. I think it's this one. It definitely can't be this one because hey, it's off and it's been abandoned. Why do these people leave old stuff on the rooftop? Well, you know, it's got no refrigerant in it. <laughs> wow. All right, let's take a look at this. Ton, that 37, that 37 means it's 37,000 BTU, so this equals a three ton. Manufacture date, July 2000. And obviously this uses R22 as a refrigerant. Came factory charge with 79 ounces. Generally a factory charge is enough for the system and 15 feet of line set with the evaporator coil. I know that my art, my, uh, Equipment is directly below, so we may just be at may just be at 15 feet. There's a ductless mini split, I guess, for the rear building by Gree. A couple rooftop units over there, not too shabby. And if you look all the way over there, dead center of the screen, right to the right of the Dime Savings Bank, that's one of the rooftop units that we service as well. But nonetheless. Let's get back to here and see what's going on. We're gonna do a visual inspection of everything that we see, document that. Okay, so the coating or the insulation on the, looks like it's six conductor wire is crumbling apart. Mostly in fact, because it's not UV resistant. All right, let me take my Milwaukee impact driver and See what's going on here and yeah let me not leave that there because I don't feel like going inside they'll put it right there all right any other screws negative okay. now first thing we're going to notice is that the contactor is not pulled in see that it's not pulled in and we also have some wiring right there. You see that on, it's like one of the terminal connections, T1 or T2, it looks a little green right there. Other than that, everything's intact. We're gonna do a quick little test. All right, so I do have line voltage there, but let's just double check to make sure we have the proper voltage. And I'm gonna get my Fluke multimeter out. Okay, and one-handedly, let's put that to voltage, and let's see if we can test. One, oh, popped off, bad boy. There's one there, and let's get the other one right there, and we have proper voltage. All right, so we got proper voltage coming in on L1, L2. What we don't have is the contactor closed. So next, we're gonna take off the term, uh, our, our 24 volt connections to the contactor and see if we got any voltage. All right, I have my yellow and brown wire disconnected off of the contactor and I have no voltage. So now we're going to investigate further. All right, we have a splice connection right here. Looks pretty intact, but I'm leaning towards 
something going on possibly with the thermostat. Possibly with the thermostat. I'm directly above the wrong store. This is the shoe repair. I need to be there above look and see optical. So it looks like we're checking out the wrong system. Let's go back up there and let's go to that Goodman unit instead. All right, let's see, because I'm here. This store right here is that one. So the store here has got to be that one, the Goodman. Ah, oh well, no harm, no, no harm done. That's right. Getting a little workout today. Congratulations to yesterday's winner. Who correctly guessed the amount of push-ups that Peter did. We're mailing him out a Pipe Doctor Let's Go Bosch Summer 2022 t-shirt. If you're interested in any gear like this one, featuring the Bosch. Let me show you what that looks like. Turn around. Let's go Bosch. Let's go Bosch. All right, let me put this cover back on and go over to the right unit. Oops. All right. So we have a, see that 30? Yeah, I'm gonna guess that's a three, two and a half ton. And it is R410A. Good. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is just put my ear against the, the door. I don't hear anything. Let's see if we see a pressure switch, which I don't. So let's take the cover off. Let's see what's going on. I was, I lose my trend of thought sometimes. I was talking about the Bosch Mikey uh, Pipe Doctor shirt. If you would like a summer 2022 sticker, give me a sticker, <laughs> t-shirt. Oh my God, I'm a mess today. I guess that little climb here knocked the life out of me. <laughs> if you would like a summer 2022 Pipe Doctor Bosch, let's go Bosch t-shirt uh details in the description box down below they are oh it's pulled in too look at that they are 23 dollars, which includes shipping within the united states all right so we have a contact to pulled in there see that it's pulled in so i'm wondering if we actually have this on we don't have any voltage there so we're missing. Look at this. <laughs> what did someone do here? What did someone do this for? Wow. Why did someone do that? Power there. Power there. Interesting. I wonder why someone left, pulled the disconnect out. Now, some of you would be inclined just to plug in this disconnect. But we need to do our due diligence. We need to figure out why, why the disconnect is pulled and why it's left resting on top of the disconnect. So we're gonna do a couple things real quick. We're gonna check for some shorts to ground. All right, we're gonna take our multimeter and we're gonna set it to, to measure resistance or continuity. All right, and we're going to pull a line off the contactor and check for shorts to ground between T1 and ground and T2 and ground. And then we're gonna take a visual inspection of the compressor to see if there's any burnt out wires or anything of the nature. All right, I'm gonna set my multimeter to read that and to make sure we have good ground connection. Let's just put that there. See, so I got my one alligator clip of the multimeter on ground. Let's get that on there, right like that. Okay, hear that? So now, nothing there, nothing there. So we don't have any shorts to ground, at least on the condense, uh, condensing, condenser fan motor or the compressor. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what happens here. And there we have it. The system is running. We're gonna test the amperage draw on our system right now. So let's get one in there. So we're at 14, 
almost 15 amps on one of the lines. And on the other, the same. Okay. Next, I'm going to dynamically test the dual capacitor here. So I'm using an app, HVAC School. It's for Tex by Tex. This is an app that you can download from the App Store or I guess Google Play. And you can test the capacitor while under load. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the voltage across the capacitor. I'm going to test the voltage between C and then fan and then Herm. Right? And we're going to see what this thing uh, tells us. Alright, so I have a measured voltage across the capacitor. And we can go to this little flow chart right here, right? There's our voltage. So we're doing common. In this example, we're doing Herm, but I'm going to do fan. My common to fan is 249 volts. Then I'm going to take my amp meter, I'm going to measure the wire leaving, right? Leaving the capacitor going to fan, and I get 0.4. Okay? There it is, 0.4. And this capacitor is a 75. Go ahead and calculate. We type in the rating of the capacitor, which is 5, and we get an underload capacitor. It's reading 4.26 calculated microfarads and that's more than 10% of the allowable or tolerable measured uh, loss. Now we're also going to do the uh, hermetically sealed side of the dual capacitor. Let's do that next. All right so my voltage across the capacitor I was reading 292.4 volts. My amperage at 7.6 and the capacitor is rated for 70. Hit the calculate button. This one's acceptable. We're getting a measured calculated microfarads of 90, sorry, 68.96. So we're fine for the capacitor, uh, the contactor, uh, contactor, the compressor side, which is the hermetically sealed line, which is the yellow wire going to the terminal harm, right? But for the fan, we are more than 10%. So we're going to recommend that we replace this dual capacitor. Yes, it is. All right, so I found the, the power plug, we call it disconnect, uh, resting on top of the, the disconnect panel. Really? Yeah, so. So someone disconnected it. Someone disconnected power for whatever unknown reason. Right. I like to do my due diligence and to confirm, right. okay, right. maybe someone did that deliberately other than sabotage, or maybe they went to the wrong unit, because I originally went to the wrong unit up there. Okay. I thought you were the store next door, so I went to their old ancient system. So then I. I A lot ahead. of times, the the liquor store okay. they, or the gourmet glot place yes. that has all the refrigeration there, they go up there all the time. They're okay. like, there's, they're, they're, they're always working on those. You may want to, so, if, if you have a small lock, you may want to invest in a little lock that we can put on the discount panel that we know we can get oh, into. Oh, there's a, yeah. There's a, yeah. you didn't write on it. I'm going to write on it now. I can. I'll put a if, label if on it. If you can put a label on yes. it, just say eyeglass or, yes. so, or um, optical. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I did. I, I did some a, testing I on. I test right. the amperage of the right. compressor of the fan. Uh, right. We tested the capacitor. The capacitor is under re, uh, allowable resistance. You should replace that. Okay. Fine. So I'll Let's change that. Change and that. if you feel the air, it should should feel it's, cold. It's definitely colder. I just want to ask you something. Hi, puppy. Uh, Hi. You're a little doggy. Hi. Not the friendliest dog. Not the friendly. You know the little ones are always the terrors. It, it's a. <laughs> They have a complex. Yeah, there's a the Napoleon complex. She's a very old, she's an old dog too. So How old is she? Really? She's 13 years old. Oh my God, what kind of is she, by the way? That's why she walks like that. She's yeah. a little off the middle. Her bones are getting old. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, that feels cold? I feel cold. This is, this is my question to you. Yes. Okay? This room is always cold. This room is always cold. And, and the venting goes like here. And then up and then in. So it's kind of like time balloons a little bit. Okay. But I, there's no way I'm going to re duck work the thing. It makes no, no sense. Um, I'm just wondering if you're in here, you, if you think there's like leakage or something like that where it would be more efficient. No. 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 Like this is cold. It's going to be cold. It's going to be cold. Because this is where this is where the exchange of heat takes place. Right, right, right. So. It is, it's the nature of the beast, you know? Right, 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 right. And this switch here has nothing to do with anything else. That's just a, a, a return, another return for this room. Right. You have one here, it looks like. Right. And you have another one there. It's just, right. I get, it needs more air. Right, right, 
because one time I hit it and and things, Make noise. things changed. So oh. then I said, what did I do? I said, I know it's working with the hose. And then I said, oh, maybe I, I flipped it up or flipped it down. It shouldn't make a difference? Nope. No, on oh, the, you mean the light switch? Yeah. Oh, the yeah. switch, yeah. The switch yeah. being off is gonna affect the, the system. All right. You know, it's like, I, I don't know which is up or down. You, that's the right now, up is on. Up is on, okay. Yes. <laughs> and I won't All right, let me that. get a, a capacitor uh, from the, need to do absolutely. Is, uh, um, are you growing anything good? What? The CBD from, from next door? <laughs> they don't just have CBD. I know what they have. You can, you can get anything. You can you buy want. anything you want there. You can get anything you want there. I mean, that, I wish I had the clientele walking in and out. The way they, they have do. all day long. I'm, I, I'm, it's crazy. I'm, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, and, and the variety of people who come, it's unbelievable. They get every nationality, orthodox, non orthodox. <laughs> Everyone's getting high next door. <laughs> but you know what it is? I'm smelling it everywhere. Not just. Yeah. I, I have an air freshener there. Okay. I have an air freshener. It's coming through the walls, huh? Because I don't want to smell it all. I, I, mean, hear. I don't mind it, but I don't want people coming and go, this guy getting high? You know what I mean? <laughs> but, but you walk outside. Or you walk in the city, or you walk yeah, down you walk any around, street around everywhere. here. But hear me, you're driving, that, you're driving down the street, street, and the guy in front of you is getting hot. <laughs> you're going to stop. It's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere now. It's unbelievable. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> you see, don't even need to go over pricing or anything. Just get it done. That's what I love about, you know, commercial HVAC. They just want the job done promptly, efficiently, effectively, and they want you to stand behind your work. So I'm going to my truck right now. I got a, a Titan Pro. I got a 70 over five. We're gonna go throw this in that condensing unit and we'll do another dynamic test under active load to make sure that the new um, dual capacitor is working properly. Even made a little label for the unit so no one else gets confused. All right, let me do this run again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna put the label down over there. Gets a little bit of protection from the sun. All right. Let me just discharge the capacitor by touching something between the terminals. All right, they are known to hold voltage, especially older ones. They all, they're all self-discharging, but the older ones will still hold the charge and you need to short ground that out, otherwise you'll be, uh, you'll feel it, you know what I mean? All right, so what I like to do is just take a picture of the term of the wiring at which particular terminal it is. Uh, highly advised, especially if you're new in the trades, to know where what goes. I happen to recall, I have a great memory on things, so I'm not gonna mark anything, but because I'm remembering where, what terminal's what. I know that the terminal that's for common or C has four. And this is standard, industry standard. I know that the terminal for fan has one. And I know that the terminal for HERM, which just stands for hermetically sealed compressor, has three. So I got my purple and my red on C. Purple and red on C. That's all I need to know. That's all I need to know right now. Let me give you guys this a quick little bit of advice. I got my hand on the dual capacitor. I just unscrewed the screw that secures this little band iron to the inside of the cabinet. If I let this capacitor drop, right, it could potentially hit the terminal for my low voltage connection. And if it does that, I'm gonna lose my power, my 24 volts to my contact because I am gonna blow the fuse at the air handling equipment, whether that's the furnace or the air handler. So pay very close attention that when you're playing with the wires in here, make sure you don't want to short anything out, all right? Lesson learned. Been there, done that. All right, I marked the dual the new dual capacitor with today's date, 5-24-22. I have my purple and red on terminal C. I have my yellow on the Herm terminal. I have my fan on the fan terminal, my brown wire on the fan terminal. And you can notice, look, I still have four terminals on C, I still have three terminals on Herm, and I still have one terminal on fan. All right, job is done. I got my sticker 
for branding purposes. I put the sticker on identifying the location, uh, what location this unit services. I took a picture of the model and serial number of the unit for my ServicePal mobile dispatching and invoicing app, which also accepts payments. And I highly recommend if you're a small uh, contractor, regardless of what you're doing, um, it's much cheaper to use this than say, for example, House Call Pro, especially if you only got a couple trucks in the road. Uh, it's very user-friendly. I've been dealing with uh, Jan and uh, ServicePal for over, just about 10 years now. And uh, it's really a great product. It allows you to do a lot of cool stuff, make your own for forms, accept uh, swipe credit cards from within the app, and I you know, really pay a very low negotiated uh, merchant processing rate. So I'm quite happy with ServicePal. I'll put a link down in the description box down below if you're interested in that. Uh, tell Mikey Pipe sent you and they'll take care of you. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something about uh, dynamically testing uh, capacitors while the system is running. When you do that, you eliminate the need to remove the wiring from the capacitor. And when you do that, there's always a risk that A, it's going to break or it's going to fall off when you try to put it back on and you're going to leave and you're going to get a recall. So I like to test dynamically uh, using the HVAC uh, uh, School app. It's really a great product. Check them out on YouTube. They have a great channel and they're, about, they're only about education and furthering the, the, uh, the professionalism of the trade. And you really got to give them a lot of respect and a huge shout out for that. One other thing, don't leave your garbage on top of the system or on the, on the roof like some of these other knuckleheads did. You know, do it the right way and um, karma will always be, will reward you. All right, real quick, I just want to show you how I typed up the invoice for the customer who already signed it, I already got paid, and a copy, you know, a PDF of the service invoice already in his inbox. Let me show you that real quick. All right, so here you go. This is the top of the form. I'm blocking out the customer's information. Uh, the service call complaint request was that the train CAC was not working. Train is the brand of the indoor equipment. And as you could see here, my diagnosis. Found system running, but blowing ambient temperature air. Condenser located on roof. Found disconnect plug removed and resting inside disconnect panel. Check for any visible deficiencies and shorts to ground. None present at this time. That is a key word right there. None present at this time. We reinstalled the plug. Cycled system. Tested system dynamically. Found dual capacitor out of range. Replaced. Tested okay. We have a line there for his model and serial number of the equipment that we worked on. If I also worked on the indoor unit. I could have also written the train um, furnace model serial number and the evaporator model serial number. Below that is my uh, the charges, my labor. There's a labor rate for a rooftop unit. There's the charge for the dual capacitor, which we guarantee for 24 months, parts and labor. Calculates everything on the bottom. We have tax included and payment received. The payment type was check, and there's his check number. We don't typically take checks from our customers, but I know where he lives. I know where he works. And uh, if you're going to write me a bad check, which I doubt in this particular case, but you never know, uh, but I did take his check. I, we normally, the company policy is uh, that the only forms of payment are cash, debit credit cards, and uh, you pause for a second, gold bullion, bearer bonds, um, diamonds, you know, uh, scrap gold. Uh, crypto, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Doge, all that good stuff. And that's when you get them to laugh a little bit, right? Because one of the things you want to do, especially when the first time greeting a client, is let them, you know, be friendly yet professional. You know, a a client, a, cons a consumer, is more inclined to be comfortable doing business with you as if they trust you and they and you you have that bond already. All right, so let's keep that in mind. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. I really, really appreciate it. If this is your first time viewing uh, a video on my channel and you like this, and you like this type of video, let me know. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. And most importantly, hit that subscribe button. All right, guys, thumbs up. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.